time Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykes retired, the USS Narwhal was one of the older boats in the submarine service. She was built in 1930 and was larger than her sisters, but slower. Her top speed was only about 17 knots. Despite her infirmities, however, the old lady made 15 war patrols. One of the high points of this amazing career was a dramatic rescue, and that is our story. During her long service, the Norwal had a succession of captains. In July of 1944, in Fremantle, Australia, Lieutenant Commander Jack C. Titus of Pixley, California, assumed command. She handles very smartly at sea, particularly in rough weather. Another nice feature, the bridge stays fairly dry. Does she maneuver pretty well? For a big boat, you might have a little trouble in port. Not much power on the motors. But she's got a good heavy bottom. If you should nudge the beach sometime, chances are you wouldn't hurt her much. But how is she submerged? Oh, uh, a little sluggish, maybe. But you should have no worries about fuel. Number 2 MB has been converted. I think you'll find it improves diving time. Shall we go below? Carry on. This is your new skipper, Commander Titus. We'll get to the introductions later. How many men attached to this boat? Ninety men, ten officers. She's a big boat, Jack. And you'll need every one of them. And they're all good men. I'm sure they are. No spare torpedoes? Haven't been carrying any. The racks were removed to give more room for cargo space. You can carry a hundred tons or a hundred passengers. Not both, of course. She may be an old boat, but she's sturdy and she's roomy. Slap a coat of paint on her and you've got yourself a submarine. All right, Captain, you've sold me. I believe you. Now tell me what's wrong. You won't back out? The deal's already made. Let's have it. She's haunted. What? Something haywire in the stern planes. None of her commanding officers has been able to figure it out. So I'll pass the word along to you. Don't give her a down angle of more than eight degrees. If you do... The stern planes will stick and stand you right on your nose. Well, that's just fine. What do you do for emergency dives? I can answer that in two words. Yes? Avoid them. She's all yours, Captain. Good hunting. And remember, eight degrees, no more. The Narwhal departed from Darwin, Australia on September the 14th for her 14th War Patrol. The stern planes had been overhauled, but was still undependable. Lieutenant Commander Gebhardt of Woodbury, Connecticut, was executive officer. The diving officer was Lieutenant Nick Annist of Knoxville, Tennessee. While the Norwal was engaged in operations in the Sulu Sea, events that were to affect her destiny were taking place off the north coast of Mindanao in the Philippines. Following the capture of the island of Moratai by American troops, the Japanese had decided to move their prisoners of war to safer areas. The prisoners were loaded into the holds of several small, rusty freighters for transportation. convoy had been attacked by an American submarine and three freighters were sunk. Many of the prisoners of war escaped and got ashore on Mindanao. We can't stay here. Patrols! I can't. I can't make it. You've got to. Just a little farther. 
if we can make it to the jungle, we've got a chance. Come on! At least we can run someone! Come on, you can make it! During the attack on the convoy, the Narwhal was off for Kud Point, far to the south, unloading supplies for guerrilla forces in the jungle. Permission to come to the bridge, sir. Mission granted. Captain, this monsoon worries me. We could drift into a mud bank. You think we ought to drop anchor? No, it takes too long to pull it in. If we're surprised, I want to be able to move out in a hurry. We've got pretty good cover here. We should have time to reach deep water. Yeah, maybe. We need plenty of time to dive. I'll take my chances on the mud banks. What's this? Tuba. Good. Bottoms up. Okay, thanks. Captain? Captain? Radio message, sir. Marked urgent. I'll be right down. Nick, don't ride yourself too hard, huh? Take over the deck. Aye, aye, sir. Come in, Buzz. What do you got there? Tuba. Compliments of the shore party. Did you ever try it, Captain? Once. Tasted like medicine. Hmm. Should I give everybody a drink? Yeah, if they want it, no harm in it, I can see. Yes, sir. We've got a hot one here, Buzz. As soon as we finish unloading, we proceed to the west coast of Mindanao. Oh, what's up, Captain? Eighty escaped prisoners of war hiding out in the jungle there. We've got to get up there and rescue them. Well, with the cargo off, we've got room for them. You better check the medical supplies. Some of those fellows have been prisoners since a time. They're in bad shape. Our rendezvous is land boy in point. But of course, that'll put us there the soonest, huh? I'll get right on it, Captain. Yeah. Oh, this is torpedo juice. When well, you don't smell it, stupid, you drink it. Here, you drink it. Maybe we better have the pharmacist may stand by just in case. Hold it, hold it. I got a better idea. We'll make him drink it first. Then if he don't go into convulsions, we'll try it. I like that oh, idea. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 no. Do you have our course? Well, Surigao Strait would be the quickest, Captain. However, it's been mine. Basilan Strait and the other passages through the Hulu Archipelago probably have been, too. What's that leave us? Subutu Passage. That'll put us off Lamboyan Point about sunrise on the 27th. Wish you could let those fellows know we're coming for them. This one's in pretty bad shape. We'll have to carry him. Papa. We were together. We found him too. You were carrying a dead man. We came so far. There's no place to go now. You're going home, fella. I'm Captain Martin, Army. Sent here to organize the guerrillas. We've radioed for a submarine to come and evacuate all of you. They'll never come. They forgot us. You'll see. There's a sub on its way here now. I hope. Anything yet? Well, Captain, we didn't go aground after all. Maybe I've got mud bangs in my brain. Just picked up a message from the Nautilus. She wasn't so lucky. 
They're hard and fast on a reef off Cebu. Are they calling for help? Not yet. They're waiting for high tide and blowing fuel over the side to lighten ship. There are no enemy airfields on Cebu. Any other submarines in the area? No, we're the nearest. We'd lose a good three days, Captain. That's not all that's bothering me. Can we accommodate a hundred men off the Nautilus and eighty prisoners of war? Two hundred and eighty all told. We'd use up our oxygen pretty fast in a long dive. Mm, that's a rough choice. The captain's a friend of yours, isn't he? The Nautilus is our sister ship. But some of those men have been prisoners since 1942. I guess they've got something coming, too. Plot, of course, will give us a chance to go either way. Heaven help us if we have to choose. The narwhal continued its run towards Lamboyant Point on a course that would permit her to veer off towards Cebu if the Nautilus failed to get off the reef. As the hour of high tide approached, Captain Titus waited in the radio shack for the Nautilus message. At 1800 it came. Where do we go, Captain? Lamboyant Point. The Nautilus floated off at high tide. Give the officer of the deck the new course. Aye, aye, sir. Two hours before sunrise in the morning of September 29th, the narwhal was off Lanboyan Point. Captain Titus submerged and worked his way in close to the shore. The prearranged signal on the point was to be a red and white cloth tacked to a frame. The combination of colors had been selected so that the narwhal would not mistake it for washing. Take a look. See you think, Captain. Neither did I. We'll take a look every 20 minutes. Sound scope. Captain. Sighted? No. Enemy ships. What do you make of it, Captain? It's no coincidence. They know something's up. We just get the signal. We could handle those babies with our deck guns. They're carrying antennas. They'd have planes here in 20 minutes. But we'll just have to stay down until dark and wait. At dark, the narwhal surfaced to charge batteries and wait for the next day. The Japanese sea trucks had continued to patrol the shore from Lanboyan Point on the southwesterly course to Lindongan Point. There had been no signals on the beach and no sign of any activity. Just after sunrise, a Japanese plane circled over the area and then flew away. The sea trucks had disappeared during the night. Captain, native boat standing this way from the beach. Prepare to surface. I'm the captain, named Titus. Captain Martin, Army. I'm sorry to be late, but I guess you saw him. Everything secure ashore? Yes, sir. I'd suggest you move to Sierra Bay. There's some shelter there, and it's a shorter run for the boats. Isn't it pretty shallow? Well, it's not too good, I'll admit. Currents and shoal water, not too much protection from the southwest monsoon. We've uh, got a number of stretcher cases. Have the pharmacist's mate break out his medical supplies. Aye, aye, sir. We'll move in just as close as we can, Captain. those men, you begin to get a faint idea why it was called the Death March at Batan. The 
gets worse. Here come the stretcher cases. Thanks. Sure. We had a plane. Don't worry about him. We'll be running out of here soon. That's all I've done in this war. Run. We didn't have a chance at Patan. Haven't got a chance now. I'm tired of being pushed around. I want a gun. I want to fight back. Your fighting days are over, friend. They were over before they started. We never had a chance to fight. Ships, bearing 342. All ahead, flank. All ahead, flank. Below. We'll run on the surface as long as we can, but if those sea trucks get help, stand by to take her down. Keep a good lookout for planes. Captain, plane dead astern. Clear the bridge! Dive! Dive! <laughs> Take it down! Take it on fast! Level her off! I can't! Mr. Anna, she won't level off. The stern plane is stuck. Captain, the stern plane is stuck in full drive. Blow valve buoyancy tanks! In making an emergency dive to escape the Japanese plane, the Narwhal had taken a down angle of 22 degrees far beyond the safety margin of eight degrees. The stern plane had stuck. 4,000 tons of ship and ballast moving down at 13 knots had been too much momentum. Blowing the tank had no effect whatever. The narwhal passed 120 feet in less time than it usually took to reach periscope depth. All hands not at diving stations, move aft. Stop. All back full. All back full. Captain Titus stopped and then back full. At 170 feet, she started back up. Stern first. All stop. Hold it out, she's gonna pop right out of the water. As the narwhal broached, the stern plane loosened and she lost the excessive down angle. In three minutes, she had gone from the surface to 170 feet, back to the surface, and then settled placidly at 120 feet. It happened so fast, the plane couldn't drop a single bomb. I think we'll just stay down here the rest of the day. Shake up your patience, Tompkins. Not too bad. Nobody even mentioned it. Maybe they think it's always this way. No casualties, I thought. I'm kind of worried about that one, Captain. It's in bad shape. Worse than the others? Physically, no. Of course, he's bad enough. But I might be able to hold him together till he gets to a doctor. Only he'd fight. You know what I mean, Captain? Yeah, I know. He broke his spirit. He doesn't seem to care. I tried talking to him, and all he says is, what's the use? It's funny. He 
think he'd be happy just to be out of this mess. That was a different war for him. He was knocked down in the first round and he's been taking it ever since. It's pretty rough never to land one of your own. You know what he said when I told him we'd gotten away from that plane? One more glorious retreat. I'll do the best you can for him. Keep me informed. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, Tompkins. Yes, sir. You think you could move him up to the conning tower? You can put him in my chair. Well, we could rig a sling and lift him up through the hatch. Do it then. It'll give him something to think about. Where are you going to sleep, Captain? We've already got somebody in your room. I'll make out. Don't worry. What is it? A ship of some kind, Captain. Looks like a small freighter. That's it, enemy freighter. We're swinging around ahead for him. Pretty lean pickings, though. Hardly worth wasting a pickle on. Well, let's let him have it anyway. It's too small, we can throw him back. Steady on course 170. See if we can wake him up when the shooting starts. Bearing. Mark. Zero, three, two. Range. Mark. 950 yards. Starboard 60. Stand by forward. Stand by forward. We're ready, Captain. Shoot. Maybe our guest would like to have a look. October, the Norwal came alongside the CB base on Mias Wendy Island and unloaded the 81 evacuees. There was one casualty despite Captain Titus' efforts. The feeling was, however, that this survivor of Bataan had not died defeated. For once, he had seen the enemy run. The following day, another commanding officer boarded the Norwal to relieve Titus. She handles very well in rough weather, and the bridge stays drier than most. Don't worry about running aground. With a heavy keel, she'll back off. What's this I heard about her stern plane sticking on hard dives? I was getting around to that. Don't give her a down angle of more than eight degrees. Well, suppose I have to. What happens? Well, I could tell you, Bill, but you'd never believe it. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. It is our pleasure to have Captain Jack C. Titus, who is a real skipper of the Norwal, with us. Jack, it looks like things both inside and outside the ship gave you an interesting time on this patrol. It certainly had its moments, but aside from a tendency to act like an elevator, the old lady got us there and brought us back. I understand those prisoners of war didn't complain. No, they didn't, Admiral. After what they went through, the Norwal looked better than the Queen Mary to them. Just one more question, Jack. What is this stuffed tuba really like? Well, it doesn't taste too good, but if you can get a couple of drinks down, you feel just like your stern plane has stuck. Well, after watching the way the narwhal acted, I think I'll have a cup of tea. Jack, thanks very much for being our guest. It was a pleasure. Thanks for giving me a second look at a nightmare. <laughs> Please join us again for another true and exciting chapter of the silent service. Take your dogs and lost goodbye Through the deep blue underneath the ocean We'll control the ocean wide From down, down underneath the sea They can force the past the world In the future's yet to be That will save as long as there's a
Underneath the sea